Well, welcome once again to the Tim and Phil Talk About Games podcast. This is Tim, uh, sans Phil. This is a slightly different bit of a review that we're doing today, uh, specifically because this was a user-requested review via Reddit, and it's specifically for something within the game of Star Citizen. Now, as people who have followed any of the podcasts so far, thank you to all 12 of you. Uh, you will notice that I am a pretty big fan when it comes to the Star Citizen game. Um, for those of you who aren't maybe aware, Star Citizen is a kickstarted and crowdsourced, crowdfunded game um, made by Cloud Imperium Games and uh, headed up by the amazing Chris Roberts, who you might know from the Wing Commander series, uh, from all the pretty much every amazing space game, uh, space simulation game that has been released in the past ever. So without much further ado, um, we're going to be doing a, probably doing a couple of feature videos on Star Citizen in the future because like I said, massive, massive fan. There's a lot going on with this game. But specifically for this review, we're going to be looking at one incredibly minute piece of the game and that is a particular gun that was uh, available on the web-based store for real dollars. Now, to be fair, the game so far is very, very buggy. It is incredibly jaggy, as you can see. Um, there's lots of lovely uh, LOD flickering and aliasing happening and all these other wonderful graphical glitches, but this is a very, very early glimpse into an alpha stage of development. So this is in no way, shape or form a polished or finished product. Most of the features that are in the game at the moment do not work. Um, this We know this because, again, it is in alpha at the moment. So what we're doing at the moment is just trying to play the game, trying to see how it works, giving feedback, bug reports, etc. to the developers so that they can figure out how to you know, progress in the development of the game. Uh, one of the things we're looking at is the Nightbridge 11 series broadsword gun. Uh, this is a cannon, a ballistic weapon, and it is not a standard weapon in the game. So it's something that you have to purchase through the online pledge store. It costs an extra bit of money, which I was willing to put down for the sake of science. Um, and so this is, first of all, it's not a gun that originally comes with any of the available pledge ships. I believe it does come on the... Uh, the Merlin, although I have a feeling that might be the one stage below this gun. This is a size 3 gun, and I'm pretty sure on the P-52 Merlin it's the size 1 uh, gun, but the same manufacturer, same type of gun. Um, most of the guns that we see so far in the game are laser-based guns, and we use laser in massive scare quotes because, yes, we realise they're not actually lasers, but we can use the word laser because science fiction, that's just what we do. So... Uh, yeah, with no more, uh, further ado, let's get into it. Now, as you can see, the game is incredibly, incredibly laggy, even on my uh, beefy PC. So, a couple of quick things that I usually like to do first is uh, throw in some changes to the renderer. So, we're using the CryEngine. You can bring down the uh, dev console using the tilde key. Um, I always turn off motion blur because it is a little bit rubbish. Uh, in the way it's currently implemented. Again, no criticism to the developers, alpha stage, all the rest of it. It's just that at the moment everything seems to be ramped up to maximum. So huge amounts of motion blur where it's entirely not necessary. Uh, the chromatic aberration... Uh, I'm going to spell that correctly. And type correctly. Uh, the chromatic aberration is atrocious. So chromatic aberration is something we do normally get in things like, for example, um, telescopes, cameras, any optic system where you've got light passing through a piece of glass. What you get is the light splits off into the spectrum. So you've got your red down one end and the blue down the other end and all the fun colours in between. And so what happens is that when you have uh, not quite perfectly focused source, um, or the fact that the source might be focused at the centre but not the edges, you might get sort of red fringing or blue fringing around the edges. And for some reason that's set all the way up to maximum at the moment, so I'm just going to turn that off. I'm also going to turn off the sharpening because, again, uh, it introduces some weird sort of effects, grainy effects that doesn't 
really need to be uh, in the game at the moment. And the other one is the HDR bloom ratio without the end there, which I also like to set to zero. So already, I mean, for me, that's a 15 frames per second boost and not much change in the graphics. Uh, so first things first, we need to find the ship. I'm going to be using the um, 300i trainer. I do have a 350R, which I am very excited to get into the game. But at the moment, we do not have any of the variants in the game. So we're just going to use the 300 trainer, which I've now lost. Please ignore the disgusting number of ships. That I have in my hangar. Uh, and the weapon is the 11 series broadsword gun. So we're going to throw that on the nose cannon there because the bulldog repeater, not something that I'm a huge fan of. Now it's important that you need to put the ammo on this. So you need to put the ammo boxes. This uses 35mm ammo. You can check that by just hovering over. Uh, so throw on the two ammo boxes. And so now we've got. That should be set up perfectly. Turning that off, and you'll see behind us on the 300, there is now the 11 series broadsword gun. Nice. I like the look of it, personally. I think it's a really nice looking, beefy cannon. Um, I love the asymmetric design, but I'm a big fan of asymmetric designs in almost everything. So Now, I'm not entirely sure that the materials on this gun are fixed and permanent in terms of the uh, physics-based um, rendering, the PBR, PBS system that Star Citizen is implementing at the moment, so they don't look entirely finished, but I kind of like the look of it. Um, the little red stripe on it and the sort of grey scheme reminds me quite heavily of Mass Effect, which is a game I am a very big fan of. So. That's attached, we can jump in the ship. Now the interior of the 300 series looks amazing now. I love the new work that they've done on the interior here. The interior hasn't been uh, ported across to the 350R just yet, um, but again, hopefully we'll see these things happening sometime in the near future. Now, alternatively, you can bypass all of this. You don't have to go through the, the process of walking into the simulator ship if you don't want to. Um, the whole point of the uh, Arena Commander trainer system, the, the game within the game sort of thing, is that it's built into the helmet you're wearing. Now, I've already put the helmet on beforehand, so I didn't need to do that again. Uh, but what you can do is you can just hit Escape and go straight to access to Arena Commander, and that will throw you straight in, which is um, handy. So, in fact, we're just going to do that. Jump in and go into Drone Sim. Throw on to Dying Star and Vandal Swarm. And off we go. A little bit of a loading time. Um, I have noticed that the loading time does get a little bit longer the more stuff I have open. So it might be um, either RAM or possibly even hard drive write uh, speed limited at the moment. Um, and with obviously the recording software and everything open, there's a fair bit slowing it down, so give it a couple of seconds to get into the game proper. Um, I will be flying with a joystick today, no HOTAS, because I do not yet own a HOTAS. I am um, hedging my bets, let's say, that there's going to be an explosion in the HOTAS market somewhat uh, soon. So, here we go. Vandal Swarm initiated. Warning, Good. there are multiple hostiles inbound. Contact. Scan initiated. Scan initiated. Three to begin with. Now, the Amniskis, the Amniski Sixes that I currently have um, on the side, uh, they're on the primary fire, so to give you an idea of how they are as a gun, Bring the 
joystick right in front of me, first of all. There we go. because I much prefer kind of hard to walk while flying um, which I've noticed on my previous attempt at actually making this video. I have noticed that the more you talk, the more you crash into asteroids. As a certain Chris Roberts himself found out, he was demoing the game uh, several times in the past. So the Omniski Sixes are incredibly powerful, um, and to be honest, probably a little too powerful. As you can see that once I actually manage to hit something, they take the shields down in usually about one shot, and then once the shields are down, they're almost an insta-kill. So... So those are the Imniskis. So now we're going to try and use That's a flare, <laughs> which is this thing here. Now, first of all, it's a ballistic gun, so it uses physical projectiles rather than lasers. Uh, and that means it's meant to do bypass shield damage. What that means is that the shield will mitigate some of the damage, and the round itself doesn't actually deplete the shields, it just damages the hull itself. However, I don't know if it's a case of the fact that the game hasn't fully implemented properly, uh, or if they just are incredibly, incredibly nerfed, or maybe the statistics are all placeholders, but at the moment it is incredibly hard to hit something with this cannon. Usually you have to be very close, and preferably uh, not having the enemy turn into too hard either. Although once it does hit, like you see there, it does seem to do a good deal of damage. It's just the fact that the um, the range, the speed on it, maybe not as good as it could be. Especially when you consider that the uh, the description of the gun itself is that it is... Uh, the official description is that the 11 series broadsword is the cannon that pilots come to when they want the three Ds. That is distance, dependability and damage. Packing a 35mm round, the broadsword also features mixed speed selections, allowing the pilot to switch between their various magazines while in combat. Now obviously at the moment we only have the one type of round, and it's just this bog standard 35mm uh, round. Maybe we'll see some like, you know, uh, fast rounds or tracer rounds that you can see better. Um, the fact that this isn't using tracer rounds at the moment is more than apparent because it's very hard to see that tiny little bit of light coming up the nose of uh, the ship there. The other advantage of the projectile weapons is that they use very little power. In fact, at the moment I'm not even sure if they use any power at all. Um, you'll notice that instead of the percentage, which the Amuskis have, this one just has an average counter. Uh, whereas when I fired the Amuskis... Oh god! How did that not kill him? God! Scary. out of there for a second because things are getting a little hairy and all 
Alright, so when I fire the Omniskis, you can see that down on the side of the screen, you'll see that the little percentage number goes down. That's the amount of power, I believe, power that is available. And again, the Omniskis just wipe everything out of the sky. Completely, completely unfair. Um, I'm just going to slow down for a minute and... Well, nope. I thought there, were only, there was only one guy left, but it turns out there's another one. Let's get rid of him first so we've got a little bit less to contend with. Alright, so now there's only one left. I'm a little damaged. Uh, I'm just going to drop my velocity right down. And... You can see that the ship has suffered a bit of damage. Uh, the landing gear that is detached is a known bug. That's not a result of damage states. That's just something that apparently happens. It's uh, not quite set up properly. So the Nightbridge can, you can see there on the nose. Uh, gimbling and it has the animations that you would expect so the gun is fully animated it's, it's all in there it's just the numbers that need to be tweaked a little you can see some damage there on my tail as well um so yeah i it's like i said it's a, a really cool looking gun um i prefer it to the mantis in terms of the uh the play style that it's, it looks like it's likely to have at some point in the near future uh, which is that of a sort of more of a sniping style weapon. At the moment, the numbers are what I would assume are a little bit fudged. They're very, very low. Um, doesn't do anywhere near the damage it should, or at least um, isn't tracking maybe as well as it could. Maybe it's the projectile speed. I'm not entirely sure what the case is there, but I'm sure we'll see some changes uh, at some point in the future. Again, this gun, not very high on their list of priorities. So I wouldn't expect to see anything big change in the near future. And again, the talking while flying thing comes by a greatest nightmare. So the Nightbridge gun, uh, the Nightbridge arms broadsword, the 11 series broadsword, uh, definitely one to keep an eye out in the future. It is in the game at the moment, uh, it does cost uh, real money, uh, so maybe don't necessarily buy it just yet if it's the kind of thing you might be interested in the future, or if maybe, you know, you just want to play around with the things that are available in the game at the moment. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. God! Zero hostile Thanks, Vixen, for taking him out for me there. So, that is a small sub review of one Contact. particular gun Eight in a game that doesn't operation. actually technically exist yet. Um, it <laughs> couldn't Contact. get much more arcane if I tried. So, thank you very much for listening, and as usual, happy gaming. See you next time.